Hello everyone, this is Reza Waizi and I'm going to teach you basics of rapid miner and data preparation using rapid miner through this tutorial. This tutorial is loosely based on Dr. Matthew Norse's data mining for masses book. For this tutorial, I'm using rapid miner 7.3.001. There is a good chance that you will be using a different version of rapid miner even though there might be some differences on how things look on yours but the basic operations of rapid miner should stay the same i've been using rapid miner since its version 5.5 uh, or 5.4 up until now its look and feel has changed a lot but its basic operation, its core operation, has stayed the same and I anticipate it stays the same for uh, many years to come. Okay, when you open up the Rapid Miner for the first time, you will see this uh, window that you can go learn, create a new process, or open existing process. I'll help you get to what you want to do faster, but I usually dismiss this window and we'll go to the rapid miner directly on this page you will see different areas on top you will see operators here again uh, your operator uh, window or tab might be uh, placed in a different area but you should see operators somewhere on your left side maybe here instead of the repository side so depending on your screen size depending on the version you are using and whether you have uh, made any customization to rapid miner in the past or not you may see this operators window in a different place here you see the repositories window and then uh, you can see uh, two different views we have design view and result view the design view is where you do your design your modeling and the results view is the view that presents the results of your modeling when you run your model and uh, this uh, button here is for running your model you have the save button open and new uh, right now this process area is blank and is ready for you to create new processes and on the right side here you will see parameters parameters uh, refer to the parameters of the operators that you have within your process area right now we have selected the process itself and these are the parameters for the process you may see the help here somewhere down here i have moved the help here so i can see the help better uh, depending on the operator that you select you can go ahead and read the help right now because uh, the process operator the process uh, window is selected the help refers to the process window help it tells you what it is what it can do for you and different characteristics of it okay let's go ahead and uh, import our first data file into rapid mine okay to add data you must uh, first create a repository right now in this window you can see the repositories i already have one samples repository and one db and i already created a visualization repository you can see that my name is there and then i have a cloud repository you need to create a new repository before you can add data or import data into rapid miner how to create a repository you click on here and you go create repository and you will choose new local repository you will give it an alias i give data mining as an alias for this repository and then you can use a standard location or you can go ahead and change its location to your desired location i'm going to change it to a location that uh, i'm using for these tutorials and that's on my desktop data set and i'm going to create a new folder here called repositories 
and I'm going to put it in the repositories. So my data mining repository will be saved on this location. Okay, after creating your first repository, now it's time to add data and place data into that repository. You go ahead and click on add data. Then it asks, where is your data? Your data resides in uh, your computer, on your computer. You choose my computer and then you look for your data where your data resides. I have already placed my data within my desktop and within the data set. You can see that I have a data set, intro data sets.csv. That's the data set that I want to work with on this tutorial. I select it and select next. Next, you will see a preview of your data, how it looks like. You can verify whether the rapid miner identified the format of the f data uh, file source correctly and can you see it in the correct tabular format or not. If not, you can go ahead and change parameters on top. You can change the whether your header row, whether, whether your first row is your header row. If it is not your first row, you can change it here. Then you have your start row, the file encoding, and uh, other characteristics that you can play with to make sure that uh, your the rapid miner is reading your data file correctly. In most cases, if the data file is an Excel file or a CSV file, it will read it correctly. Go ahead and click next. Then you will see format your columns. You can change the format of your columns here. For example, the gender uh, variable gender is picked up as polynomial. You can go ahead and change its type. You can see that on rapid miner we have different data types. We have polynomial and binomial, real, integer, date, time, date, and time. So polynomial is also categorical. Binomial is a binary. It's, it can be either true or false. So it's a specific case of polynomial. Uh, which only has two outcomes. It can be real. A real number is such as 3.25. Integer, you all know what integer is. Date, time, combination of date, time, only date, only time. So here, gender is a most probably a binomial, but it is detected as a polynomial. Again, polynomial is a more general case of binomial. We can say binomial is a specific case of uh, uh, polynomial. You can go ahead and change it this one. Remember that you can always change the variable type or data type after you import your data. But for rapid miner, it is usually easier and less problematic to change it here at the time of importing. Then you can see that the rest of your variables, how they are picked up as integer, polynomial, polynomial, and polynomial. Let's go ahead and import this data. Go next. Uh, one more thing to pay attention here is these question marks. These question marks, they are referring to your missing values. So you click next. Here on the last page, you have to choose which data repository you want to place this data set on. I choose data mining, the first repository I created. And you can give your data set a name. I just leave it as intro dataset, but you can go ahead and change its name and click finish. Once you import the dataset, it will go to your results view and it will show you a view of the dataset. On the data view, you can see a tabular view of your data. You can see the attribute names on top and the examples or records in each row. If you click on the statistics tab, you can see the metadata. You can observe the metadata for this data. So you see the attribute name. You can see the attribute type, uh, whether is there any missing value or not, and some statistics, some descriptive statistics. So if it is a binomial or polynomial, you will see the least most that tells you what is the least frequent number or the least frequent entry, and what is the most, and you can see the range of values. If it is an integer or real, you can see min, max, and average. If you click on these uh, 
attributes it also gives you histogram that can tell you something about the distribution of your data so this statistics uh, tab is the tab that you have to spend a lot of time to to see if there is any missing values if there is any inconsistencies uh, you already know your data descriptions you already know the ranges you have to check and see if the ranges matches the description range and uh, you have to look for any missing data or any possible outliers so uh, one easy way to identify outliers is through uh, looking at the histogram so for example here on the histogram for Twitter which the question is whether the user uh, uh, whether the internet user uses Twitter or not we have no yes and we have 199 you can call it inconsistency but just using this histogram chart you can see that we have something that does not fit our data description so that's an inconsistency, inconsistency that we need to take care of. You can also click on open chart, which will take you to a bigger and better view of the, that histogram. I'll talk more about charts in future tutorials. Now let's go back to statistics. As you can see, we have some variables with missing values and we just identified one variable with one inconsistency. Now let's go ahead and see what rapid miner offers us in terms of the data preparation what can we do let's go let's close this tab here under the results and go back to design you see that under design we have nothing it's the process uh, window is completely empty so if you want to use the imported the, the recently imported data set or your previously imported data sets in the process window you need to go ahead and uh, select them from your repository find them and select them and drag and drop them into the process window once you do that you need to connect the output of this operator to the results port of the process window so you do that and now you have your most basic and the simplest model on uh, rapid miner you can see that we have retrieve intro data set by drag and dropping this data set uh, from the repository uh, window into my process window I called upon an operator which is called retrieve and the retrieve operator will go ahead and retrieve my data set from my data repository and make it ready for further processing now I can go ahead and run this simple model. The results will be something that you have already seen. I'll just process the data, will give you a data view, a tabular data format view, and will give you statistics or the metadata, data about your data. Now let's go back to design view again. We want to start with dealing with the inconsistency. What was our inconsistency? The inconsistency was Twitter, right? and remember here you are just learning how to do stuff uh, how to do these tasks using rapid mind some of the reasonings may not be really logical may not sound very solid for you but remember here the purpose is for you to learn how to use rapid miner in each case in each data mining and data preparation task you will have to use your own logic use use your own domain knowledge make your own assumptions in preparing data for mining so let's go ahead and uh, search for an operator that can actually go ahead and replace this inconsistency for us so as you can see here most people said that they do not use twitter uh, only a few around two people said that they are using twitter uh, one person just typed 99 so what is that 99 again you can make assumptions that 99 maybe the person wanted to said yeah 100% I use a uh, Twitter put 99 uh, it's just he wanted to play with us put 99 so you don't know uh, but the, the important thing in uh, data preparation is that to write down to remember any assumptions that you make about your data here if you assume that the person wanted to answer yes that's why he wrote 99 so you have to write it down in your report 
I changed 99 to yes because I believe the person meant yes because 99 is close to 100, whatever your reasoning is. Now here I'm going to go with another uh, uh, approach. I'm going to choose another approach. I would say because majority of people, majority of our respondents, they said they are not using Twitter. There is a good chance. There is actually 80 to 20 percent chance uh, that this person has already said no. It's that's one of those that who are not using uh, Twitter. So I'm going to change this 99 into no. And if I go to data view, you can see it here under the Twitter. We have no, 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 yes, no, 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 yes, 99. So I'm going to change that cell from 99 to no. How can I do that in Rapid Miner? Well, in Rapid Miner, everything takes place through use of operators. You have a bunch of operators here uh, grouped in different categories. You can go ahead and search for your operator. Uh, the operator that I'm going to use for replacing uh, that 99 value with a no is called replace. So you can go ahead and search for an operator. In many cases, you can just guess what the operator sh name should be and you start searching. You know, you search for that operator and Rapid Miner will bring up all the operators that matches your search criteria. Either they have uh, that name in their operator name title or they have uh, the word replace in this example somewhere in their description so here you see under the values we have map we have replace and we have replace dictionary replace this operator replaces parts of the values of nominal attributes so we are dealing with a nominal attribute right it's yes and no by a nominal is a specific a special a pay, uh, case of nominal or polynomial attribute so let's go ahead and drag and drop this one you can either drag and drop it exactly on the line and if it is exactly on the line you will see that the line gets highlighted once you do that you can see that output of the retrieved data set is connected to the example set port of the replace operator and the example set out port of the replace operator is connected to the results port so what if you fail to exactly drop the this operator on this line something like this will happen you should not worry at all so here I failed to exactly uh, drop it on the line you can see it's disconnected you can go ahead and easily connect it yourself now let's go ahead and click on the replace operator on the right you will see the parameters for this operator so you have attribute filter type right now is all that means that it will include all the attributes but we are not interested in all the attributes we are only interested in replacing the value one of the values for the attribute twitter so i'm going to select single so which attribute I'm interested in? I'm interested in Twitter. So I select Twitter. And replace what? Replace 99 by what? By N. And remember, rapid minor is case sensitive. So lowercase N is different than uppercase N. Now let's go ahead and run this model. We can go ahead and see if the change has taken place yes you see that the 99 does not exist anymore it's been replaced with n and you can go to statistics you can see here uh, when you open this up you can see that the histogram only has no and yes and we have nine no's another thing that when you import data that uh, you can pay attention to is under SAS tab you can see the number of examples here at the bottom special attributes and regular attributes we have 11 examples that means that our table has 11 rows uh, we have zero special attributes special attributes on rapid minor attributes that you flag them as a special such as your label or target attribute or attribute that you flag it or define its role as id there are more uh, special attributes that uh, I will talk about uh, about them in later tutorials. And then you have 15 regular attributes. Regular attributes are also 
independent variables or independent attributes are the attributes that have no specific role in your analysis they're just there and you assume that they probably would affect or would impact your target variable right now on this specific data set we have not defined any label or target variable now we just replace the 99 that inconsistency with a good value let's go back and take a look at our statistics look at look at our metadata we have a lot of missing data on different variables so one of our variables other social network has seven missing values you can actually go to go back to data view and see it here we have a lot of missing value remember different strategies that you could use in dealing with missing values so we had three major st strategies actually four the first one was just to leave them like that which you already know that it's not usually a good thing to do you cannot usually leave missing values like that you have to do something about them it's not acceptable in most cases then you could replace them with appropriate value you can you could replace missing value values with an appropriate value you could get rid of the records with a lot of missing value or you could just drop the variable with a lot of missing value here we have one variable other social networks with a lot of missing value this one is, is off of a survey that uh, we gathered about internet usage internet users about their marital, marital status years on the internet uh, their gender race birth year uh, marital status years on the internet hours per day they spend on the internet preferred browser preferred search engine preferred mail uh, read news online shopping online gaming and uh, whether they use facebook or not and the last question was whether they use other social networks or not so many people this said that they do not use other social networks basically by leaving that field blank that's why we have a lot of missing values so when you have a variable with a lot of missing values it's usually a good choice to go ahead and get rid of that variable altogether so how can you do that by using an operator so what do you think the operator should be it's called select attributes so we are selecting some attributes using this operator to be included in our analysis so again select attribute if you go to help it says this operator selects which attribute of an example set should be kept and which attribute should be removed this is used in cases when not all attributes of an example set are required it helps you to select required attributes so it's there to help you select the required attributes we are making one of the attributes not required and that's the other social network so basically this one this operator will only let through the attributes that you want to use further in your analysis now we want to take social other social network attribute out what can we do we can either go ahead and select the rest of attributes to be included or we can select social net uh, so other social network attributes to be excluded but this one is this operator select attributes operator is only good for selecting attribute not deselecting them so let's go to parameters again attribute filter type is all right now it lets through all the attributes if i run it like this no changes will happen you will see that all the attributes here again if you look at it we have 15 regular attributes and other social network is there if we go back here i change it to single single attribute will only let one single attribute through so if i go ahead and select other social network what will happen it only let other social network attribute through let me run it and you can see you only see other social network attribute and if you go to statistics we only have one regular attribute it left the rest out so how can i just uh, deselect other social network uh, network attribute but let the rest go through you have two options you can either go and select invert selection click invert selection here and run the model right now we'll let everything through but the other social network attribute another way of doing it is to 
instead of selecting a single selecting a subset when you select the subset you can go ahead and select all the attributes that you want this operator let through so i select everything but other social networks and when i run it you can see the same thing other social networks is not there and the regular attributes are 14. so whichever way you choose it's up to you both ways work so i usually go with the way that has less work and it's easier to achieve so i go select single attribute and then click on invert selection again you can see that it's not there anymore and the number of regular attributes are reduced to 14. now let's see what can we do with other variables with missing values we have read news with one missing value online shopping with two missing values and online gaming with three missing values let's go ahead and take a look at the data one more time now let's go and implement our second strategy which was eliminating records with lots of missing value instead of variables remember it makes sense when there are records with lots of missing value just to remove them uh, we already removed one variable now let's go ahead and remove a bunch of records that contain missing value from our analysis uh, which record is a good candidate you see this one has two missing values also this one has two missing values and this one only has one missing values so let's go ahead and remove both of them the operator for removing or selecting uh, rows or records or examples is called filter example so filter examples will go ahead and let through some examples that meet certain criteria for you I selected filter examples I will go ahead and add filter for online gaming and I will go is not missing so it will let through only those records from online gaming only those examples from online uh, gaming that their value is not missing I click OK and what do you think will happen if I run this? I will take out uh, those two records from online gaming that had missing values. Now let's go to statistics. You can see that online gaming has no more missing values. That's zero. And the number of examples is reduced to eight. So we, I had three missing values in online gaming and it took those three missing values out you can go back and see them again let me delete this and run this model one more time you can go to online gaming we have three missing values one here one here one here so the filter what the filter example did it went ahead and delete this row delete this row delete this row let's do this one more time okay we have eight examples 14 regular attributes now we have one more attribute with a missing value that's online shopping so here online shopping three uh, three respondents told us that they are doing online shopping four respondents said that they don't do online shopping so we have uh, one respondent did not respond did not provide anything so we want to replace this missing value with another value again you can argue anyway you can argue that it should be yes that the missing value should be replaced with a yes you can argue that the missing value should uh, should be replaced with a no or you may have a different argument oh uh, well let's go ahead and learn what is the mechanism in which or by which 
you can go ahead and replace the missing value you can go ahead and search for missing here missing value we have replaced missing values here you go ahead and select replace missing values then you need to select which up which attribute you want to work with and it was online shopping right you go select single and you go online shopping the default is by average if you want to change uh, replace it by average but does this make sense no it doesn't make sense because we are not dealing with a real or integer variable we are dealing with a nominal variable in this case with a binomial true false yes no variable then you have to go ahead and change it to a value and I want to change the value to yes so I give them equal numbers so you provide the replenishment value and click run you can go to statistics and online shopping there is no missing value and we have equal number of yeses or nos so you've learned how to select attributes in case of you know if you want to delete one attribute either because there are a lot of missing values in it or you want just to delete an attribute from your analysis because you think you think it's not uh, it's not contributing it's not affecting your target variable it's not contributing to your goal you can go ahead do that select attribute if you want to filter examples select out row, uh, rows or records for whatever reason one reason is that you want those rows to be out because they have a lot of missing value in them uh, another example is that you just don't need those rows those are outliers those are the rows that are uh, not contributing to your goal or those those are the rows uh, that contain a lot of errors so you can go ahead and use filter examples to filter out those rows and you can use replace missing values to specifically replace missing values with a specific value if it is a nominal or binomial if it is a real or a integer you can go ahead and replace it with minimum maximum average or zero but it does not really give you uh, more options uh, it does not really give you algorithms for estimating the missing values So let's summarize what you've learned uh, in this uh, tutorial. First, you may see totally different layout of windows for your uh, rapid miner, but do not be afraid. Do not get scared. The core functionality stays the same. In rapid miner, everything is done through operators. You can always search for operators, and typically operators have uh, names that make sense in that case and operator names typically correspond really well with what they do and you also have learned about different operators that are used in data manipulation in rapid miner as i said rapid miner is not really good at data manipulation you might be able to do a lot of these things easier in other applications but then you save your file and uh, import it to rapid miner however it provides some basic data manipulation capabilities as you've seen here a rapid miner provides more capabilities and more operators in dealing with data and I encourage you to study those operators use operators on your own now you've learned how to create basic models in rapid miner and you can start experiencing different operators and learn a lot more on your own good luck